Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to do a quick video today about selling uh, stock video footage on a website called Pond5 and what I figured out so far in terms of a workflow that works uh, nicely for me. So um, the first thing, I signed up for Pond5 just a few months ago, I think probably like six months, but it's been in the first uh, last month or two that I've started selling a few clips and I'm super excited because I was just kind of uploading to Pond5. I'm trying to build up my own stock library, my own library of B-roll, which if I can say so myself, I think is quite a good idea. I'm also uh, building up a Foley library and I'm doing this kind of with a long-term vision of getting into video. I'm storing those clips on my NAS and they're just kind of sitting there. Um, if I need, so I label everything and I'm like, if I need, you know, uh, a clip of uh, a train going by in Jerusalem, which is where I shoot most of my videos, it's there. Um, but simultaneously, I'm like, well, I may as well, uh, you know, if I can make a bit of money off these, uh, why not and put it towards um, my next camcorder purchase. So what I've been doing is basically going out to shoot my YouTube video. So I'm shooting one today. And whenever I'm there, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on anything that might be useful for stock. Um, and I think that's kind of, you have to think about it from the buyer's perspective. If something's been shot many times over, it's I think it's pretty unlikely that your clip is gonna be, unless it's an amazing clip. So I'm trying to look for the more obscure things in my city, uh, protests, uh, COVID I've heard is really good, but I'm kind of looking for landmarks that I haven't found in Pond5 and trying to grab those. But I wanted to talk today, uh, just a couple of workflow things that have kind of made sense to me and that I thought would make, might make sense to other people. So number one, Increasingly, I'm trying to do my video footage on a camcorder and not on the Femi Pam 2. I do love my pocket gimbal, but um, you know, a camcorder just gives you a lot more options in terms of uh, getting uh, external microphones and just getting accessories. So what I find helpful is one of two things. I either bring along two cameras and this is just for shooting stock if I see any stock worthy moments to capture or I'll put a separate SD card just for stock. But what I didn't find helpful was trying to do everything at once. So like, you know, I'd go out <clears throat> to shoot a YouTube video, I'd grab some clips through YouTube, and then I'm like, oh, this would be good for stock. So I'd shoot a stock clip, and then I'd go into my SD card, and I'm like, I can't remember what was for stock, what was for YouTube. Um, I tend to shoot stock clips specifically, and not just grab random pieces of B-roll. So the second thing, um, so that's very helpful I found is to separate, uh, to bring out a camera just for stock. And I'll tell you another reason why I found that good. I generally shoot my videos for YouTube in 1080p, in other words, full HD. Now my rationale is that, firstly, I'm not producing anything super advanced or cinematic or anything like that. It's pretty, you know, standard content. Um, I also have a really sucky home internet connection. Uh, unfortunately, there's just like not a better one available. And secondly, my PC isn't like super high spec, even though the graphics card is quite good. So I don't see any justification for doing most work in 4K. I think 1080p looks fine for the kind of stuff I'm putting out, such as this video blog. Um, but for stock, I think it makes a world of sense to sell everything in 4K. So what I used to do when I was shooting a lot of stuff on the Femi uh, Pam 2 Pocket Gimbal is I'd kind of constantly be going back and forth between settings, changing between 1080p and 4K for stock and that just was kind of a big distraction. So again, what I've done is I have my Femi Pam 2 configured for stock and my two stock configurations or what makes sense to me are as follows. Firstly, um, it's set in a 4K 24 FPS. So it's always ready, it's always there for stock. Now, when it comes to 4K versus 1080p, I've sold some 1080p clips on Pond5. I've sold a couple of 4K clips. From my perspective, it makes much, much more sense to upload in 4K because increasingly buyers are going to be looking for 4K, but Pond5 will de-res your 4K clips and offer them in 1080p and you can offer those for cheaper. So I don't see any advantage to uploading in 1080p because to state the obvious, if you upload in 1080p, there is no 4K, but if you upload in 4K, a buyer can choose to purchase 1080p if that's all they need for their, uh, for their project. So um, the two settings were one, the resolution for my stock camera is 4K. And number two is I actually don't capture noise when I'm shooting stock. So sometimes audio is helpful. Like if you're at a protest and there's chance and you might wanna get that. Um, for me, my feeling is that in most cases, capturing audio is going to create 
more problems. Most stock buyers, as far as I know, don't want audio. They're not going to use the audio. They just want the footage. Um, if there's back, if you're shooting something like a cityscape and there's like background music coming from a cafe, that could create a, a copyright issue that a Pond5 creator is going to flag. So from my perspective, audio is more a liability than an asset when you're shooting stock. So what I do is I actually disable the audio and I'll turn it on manually if I'm uh, shooting some stock clip where I think, okay, that could be useful to have some audio. So that's basically what I figured out so far. Just to wrap this video up because I don't want this to be super long. Um, I bring out a separate camera just for shooting stock. I don't go out just to shoot stock because I don't think that would be a productive use of my time. But while I'm out shooting video and in the kind of video mode, um, that's when I try to grab some stock. Um, I keep the, my stock camera, which is currently a pocket gimbal because I actually think these are really versatile tools for capturing stock. They're very, very small um, and they have a gimbal and camera built in so you can create nice uh, sort of cinematic, I hate using that word, but um, smooth and gentle pans that could be useful for a stock buyer. And finally, I don't capture audio on my stock because um, on, I only turned it on if, it's, uh, if there's a real need for it because I figure that it's probably not gonna be useful. So that's what I figured out so far. I'm just you know six months into the process, but I have begun uh, generating a bit of revenue through Pond5, which is helpful. And we'll be going towards uh, my next camcorder, which is going to be the Canon XA40, which I'm very excited to be upgrading to soon. Thank you guys for watching. And if you'd like to get more videos from me, please subscribe to this YouTube channel.